In the 57, it's Bill Joyle. Then the 69 for Don Franklin, 86 for uh, Rick Doner. Then it is the 61 for Dan DeBuke, the 08 for Andrew Bordeaux, and the 17 for James Sayward. That's the field as they are rolling off turn number two with Josh Terry in the lead. He's got Kevin Putin in the second spot with the 25. Joe Warren running third. They're three wide for that fourth spot. Big Daddy's on the inside. In the middle is Curtis Seymour. On the outside is Rob Favreau in the 22. First lap of the night goes the way of Josh Terry in car number 43. Terry in the 43, Kevin Booten in the 25. Booten goes to the top of the racetrack and really sticks it off the top of turn number two. Gets good bite down the back stretch and he'll surge to the lead on the outside into turn three. Here comes Kevin Booten working the top of the track. Josh Terry right with him down the inside at the stripe. Here's Kevin Booten in the 25 leading lap number two. Terry works still on the inside. Joe Warren will trying to get in the mix with Freihofer number 13. He's running in that third spot. Kevin Booten pulling away a little bit, still running on the outside of the racetrack. Josh Terry, the 43, runs second, and at his door now, pulling up the 13 of Joe Warren. Running in the fourth spot, it is the 69 for Don Franklin. Fifth is Curtis Seymour in the 357. That's Dan Dubuque in the sixth spot. Running in seventh is Rick Dorner with the 86. Rob Favreau's off the pace with the 22, and he is heading back to the pits. Out front, Kevin Booten's lead is two car lengths. Joe Warren still on the outside of the 43 of Josh Terry, about to take the second position away. He will. Josh Terry fading back to third and falling back into the clutches of Don Franklin at car number 69. Franklin works to the outside, and Josh Terry in the 43 will allow his car to drift up a little bit. He's been fading back from the top two drivers and falling into the clutches of car number 69. Then it's a big gap back to Curtis Seymour in the 357. Closing in on him is the number 86 of Rick Doner. Out front, Kevin Booten's lead, still two car lengths. Booten has been on the outside the entire qualifier. He likes it out there. The car seems to be running well, and he's maintaining the advantage over Joe Warren. Warren pulling away from Josh Terry. It was about a car length. Now it's two, almost three car lengths between the second and third place cars with two laps to go in qualifier number one for the versatile trailer sales renegade division. Booten still on the top of the racetrack. Joe Warren Looked like he was going to pick up a, about a car length off of turn number two, but Kevin got a real good run off the top of the second turn and pulled it back to two car lengths as they race off the fourth turn of the white flag. Warren has closed to a car length. He'll dive down to the inside, try to get to the inside of Putin's 25. That's where Kevin's been getting a good run, and he'll shoot down the back stretch and open it back up. Kevin Boot in the 25, trying to hold off Joe Warren in the 13, the defending track champion. Here comes Kevin Boot in car number 25. The defending track champ gets it done. He wins the first qualifier. Joe Warren is second. Josh Terry third. Fourth is Don Franklin. Racing to the fifth spot is Rick Doner. Sixth is Curtis Seymour. Seventh is Dan Dubuque. Eighth is Billy Joyle. Ninth is going to be James Sayward. And finishing oh, 10th against Jason McClatchy. Ten cars ready to run. Qualifier number two for the Renegades. Takes the green flag as they head up into turn number one. Robert Gordon in the H2O taking the lead. The seven of Joe Daniels looking to make a, a move through the middle of the racetrack as he's got the three of Dave Drake on the outside. The 11 on the inside, that is Lance Rabtoy. And Joe Daniels running through that uh, middle line trying to get to second, and he will. Lance Rabtoy on the inside with car number 11 had third at the stripe. Daniels in car number seven was in the second spot. Robert Gordon is pulling away. Of course, last week it was the H2O in the seven car who had that 11 lap side by side battle for the win in the Renegade division. Eventually Gordon finished the pass on the white flag lap and that allowed him to take home the checkered flag. And Joe Daniels finished in the second spot with that number seven car. Right now, Joe working on the outside of Lance Raptoy, who's putting up a real good fight on the inside as they run door to door for the second position and they've been running that way for the better part of a lap and a half. Gordon and the H2O slipped up a little bit in turn number three that allowed the cars contesting the second spot to close a little bit. But Robert again pulls away with the H2O as the 11 and 7 continue to run side by side. Running right behind them in the fourth spot is Dave Drake in car number three. Then a gap back to Mark Karen. The five car is fifth. And Jason McClatchy, who was running well in practice with that number seven. He's running right off of his back bumper. McClatchy right now is in the sixth spot. Halfway for Robert Gordon with the H2O. But uh, this battle continues, the 11 and the 7. It's basically been ongoing since lap number one. They've been running side by side for the uh, entire qualifier. Lance in the 11 on the inside, Joe Daniels in the 7 on the outside. They've gone back and forth for that second spot. That time Joe got a little hot going into turn number four, and that cost him a little bit as he lost some ground to the 11 of Lance Raptoy. A little too hard going into the fourth turn, had to back out of it and get on the binders, and then allowed Lance to search through on the inside. 
But they're back even as they head into turn number three. The battle for second, Lance Raptoy working the inside of the track. Joe Daniels working a middle and higher line. This time it's gonna be Joe Daniels in that second spot with two laps to go. Daniels trying to finish the pass, trying to get the car down in front of Lance Raptoy. He's able to do it. So the battle that was some six laps in the making, side by side racing for the second spot, finally goes the way of car seven and Joe Daniels as he has that second spot and he's gonna try to chase down Robert Gordon, but with a white flag already out, not enough time for Joe Daniels to chase, chase down that H2O unless Robert Gordon makes a major mistake and that is not likely to happen. So Robert Gordon started on point in this second qualifier and here he comes for the final time off of turn number four, he's gonna win it. Second qualifier goes to the Milton Vermont driver, Robert Gordon wins. Joe Daniels second, third, Lance Raptoy fourth, it's Dave Drake. Fifth is gonna be the five of Mark Karen. then it's Jason McClatchy in car number 70 finishing in sixth. Seventh is Bob Dragoon, eighth is Metal Man, ninth is Freeman Sawyer, and in tenth. the Budweiser Brassard Mazda number 10 from Candia, Quebec, it is Patrice McGrail. And shotgun on the field driving the Tunes Home Improvement MNL Dairy Flying Ryan Autobody 60 from Shore, Vermont, it's Jimmy Ryan. 10 cars take the green flag in this one. Jim McComb, a late arrival as he gets uh, out on the back stretch with the field already having taken the green flag. Out front, it's Leon Gagnon. Patrick Dupree running in the second spot. Here comes George Foley on the inside. He touches the wheel of Andy Powell in the three. Everybody shakes out though, and they continue on. Boxed up towards the back of the pack, the 27 of Cam Grady, the 66 of Jason Bruno, they run wheel to wheel. Looking the outside now is the 80 of Andy Haywood. Haywood looks to the extreme outside of the 66. He's gonna go there. And here comes Andy Haywood flying around the 66 of Jason Bruno and sizing up Andy Powell in car number three next. Out front, it's Leon Gagne as they work around Jim McCombs, number five. The 24, the pistol, Patrick Dupree runs in that second spot. Then it's George Foley in the 34, running in third, right off the back bumper of the 24. Dupree looks to the inside of Gagneau for the lead as they race into turns one and two. Gagneau hangs on to the lead. Look at Foley go on the outside. George Foley flying around the 24, trying to take that second spot away. Here comes Foley with a shamrock bar and grill number 34, trying to go from third to first. Closed off on the outside by Leon Gagneau. Three veteran drivers battling for the lead out front. Gagneau's got the lead. Foley driving the 34 down to the inside in the middle of the back stretch. Foley tries to take the lead going to three. Look at that move by George Foley. Here comes Foley off at of turn number four. He's the new race leader and we're halfway. George Foley dancing off the top of turn number two that last lap. Looked outside, threw it down to the inside and was able to fly to the inside of Leon Gagneau into the third turn, take the lead away. Gagneau runs in the second spot. Patrick Dupree running in third. George Foley is checking out. Pierre Bertillon is in the fourth position. Andy Haywood has moved into fifth. Sixth is Andy Powell in the number three. Then it is the 66 for Jason Bruno, the 27 for Cam Grady, the 10 for Patrice McGrail, the 60 for Jim Ryan, the five of Jim McComb. George Foley has a half backstretch lead over Leon Gagneau in the number four. Patrick Dupree running comfortably in the 24 in that third spot. Then it's Pierre Bertillon in the one, running in fourth. Two laps to go for George Foley. Foley had problems a couple of weeks back. Remember, I had to drive the zero car of Craig Ormsby in the feature event after having problems in practice. Ran just a couple of laps of practice before he had motor problems. They certainly have something fixed because he is cooking them out front. Here comes George Foley. He's going to bring it home to the victory. Car number 34, it's the Shamrock Barn Grill Machine. Pulse for his logging car for George Foley, the winner. Leon Gagno second, Patrick Dupree third, Pierre Bertio fourth, Andy Haywood fifth, sixth, Andy Powell seventh, Jason Todd Stone, Stone the G-Stone Motors 1X. Outside Todd Stone driving the 0-1, the Alpha Drilling and Blasting Car for Terry Hayes. And shotgun on the field in the 0-2, it is Mike Riel from West Jay-Z. That's the field. 11 modifieds taking the green flag in this second qualifier. Problems over in turn number two. Vince Quinville got a piece of the Roger Labreche number 100, but they were able to sort things out. As out front, here they come off of turn number four. It is Craig Ormsby showing the way with a zero. Ormsby leads, running in second is the Brandon Bandit, Don Scarborough. Third is Andy Lindemann. Fourth is Craig Riel. Trying to move on the inside of the 76 is car number 46 for Martin Hebert. Hebert running in the sixth position on the inside. Mike Wells on the outside. 
shuffled back to that sixth spot as Bear comes through to grab the fifth position and away, away and now looks to the inside of Craig Riel in the 0-2 as he tries to go to fourth. Vince Quinville in the 78 also making a move to the inside. Here comes Quinville trying to take a spot away from Mike Wells. He will as Vince Quinville with car number 78 goes to the sixth position. Out front it is Craig Ormsby in the zero. Running in second, it is the Brandon Bandit Don Scarborough, then a big gap back to the 46, as Martin Hebert has moved to the third position. Hebert putting up a pretty good charge, first time in that machine. Of course, that is the Michel Vienne, number 46. Vienne uh, out for about a month with uh, some cracked ribs and also a shoulder injury after he flipped his car over in turn number three two weeks ago. The Brandon Bandit Don Scarborough trying to size up Craig Warnsby in the zero. He's got a line down to the inside as he goes for the lead into turn number one. Warnsby works the middle of the track, now goes to the top with that zero car. The 11 of Scarborough on the inside will power through and take the lead going into the third turn. Ormsby comes back on the top of the racetrack. Here comes the Brandon Bandit through on the inside. He's trying to fill, oh, they touch along the front stretch, but everybody is able to hang on to it. Brandon Bandit Don Scarborough with a tense moment there, but he was able to hang on to that 11 machine as he pulls away to about a four car length advantage over the zero of Ormsby. Ormsby running in that second spot. Chasing him down, though, is the 46 of Marta Hebert. Hebert running in third, running in fourth is Craig Riel with the CO2. Todd Stone with a 1X working hard, trying to get into the top four. Stone right now running in the fifth position. Right behind him, it's Andy Lindemann in the three. Two laps to go for the Brandon Bandit, Don Scarborough. Scarborough running in the uh, lead by some seven or eight car lengths over Craig Ormsby in the zero. And it's Martin Hebert in the number 46, who's had an impressive run. First time on board that Michel Vien, number 46, and he's run strong the third position. White flag out for Don Scarborough. Running at fourth, it is still Craig Riel in the Plattsburgh Radiator CO2. He's feeling the heat from the 1X of Todd Stone. Final time around in this second qualifier. Checkered flag is out. The win's going to go to the Brandon Bandit, Don Scarborough. He gets the win. Second to Craig Ormsby. Third goes to Martin Hebert. Fourth to Craig Riel. Fifth to Todd Stone, six to Vince Quinville, seven Three from Champlain, New York. It is uh, Aaron Bartomey and shotgun on the field. Jason Durgan from Morrisonville with the 17. That's the field, green flag. 13 machines take the green flag in this one as they are flying off turn number two. Martin in the 90, Greg Atkins in the one. Well, those two guys had a good battle last week as uh, Atkins ran much of the race right behind Martin with that number 90 machine before eventually he was able to work past him in the 50 lapper after Martin. Oh, look out, Dan Brown spins, and they're going to box it up over at turn number two. Dan Brown starting spot. Then it's Max Vien in the 25. Those cars running in the top five. Here they come off turn number four. Green flag. Martin Wah in the 90, leading him off of turn number two. And it's Atkins in the one. It's Dan Brown in the 327 in that third spot. Chris Kaye is in the 18. Brian Trim in the 28. One car fighting in the right turn number four. That is the 25 of Max and Vien. Max having a tough time negotiating that fourth turn, and he is losing a bunch of spots to the rest of the pack, at least track position to the rest of the cars out front. And again, really fighting a bad loose condition at 25. That jumping right out from underneath them over in turn number four. So it's the 90 of Martin Watt pulling away from Greg Atkins in the one. Then Brown in the 20, 327. K.A. in the 18. Brian Trim running stronger this week in the 28. Brian had a tough time in the opening race. Uh, he is uh, challenging Chris K.A. who is one of the consistent runners in this division. The strides made by that 2018. And the B3 for Aaron Bartomey, the 55 for Matt Woodrow, 38 for Mike Finney, Max Vienne in the 25. Trying to hang on to that machine as we're halfway in qualifier number three. As Jason Durgan in the 17, they had motor problems two weeks back, trying to put that motor back together. And car number nine for Jimmy and Crone at the back of the back. Martin Wah, well, there's no secret the line that he likes around this racetrack. He likes to work on the top. And even when leading by a considerable amount, that's where he likes to keep that machine. Get right up close to the wall along the front stretch. Greg Atkins trailing by half the front stretch. Jason Durgan heading back to the pits with the 17 modified. Max Vienne is parked in the middle of the back stretch on the inside of the racetrack, and that is going to bring out a yellow flag. 
past the halfway point of the qualifier. Martin Wong, Greg Atkins, and then uh, Dan Brown in the 327 green flag. Ryan Trim with that 28 running in the four spot. Then it's Chris Kay in the 18 running in fifth. Sixth is Matt Woodruff. Seventh is Aaron Bartomi with a B3. Then it's Mike Finney, the 38, and the nine of Jimmy Introne. Mike Finney sideways in the third turn. Has he got a good run on the back of and he had to go sideways and get on the binders a little bit other than uh, prevent himself from running over that B3. And there's contact over in turn number two. Finney diving down to the inside of Bartomi's B3 and lost control of it a little bit, pushed up the track, and the B3 kept him straight. White flag is out for the 90 of Martin Martin's going to win this one. Greg Atkins is going to finish in the second spot. Best battle on the racetrack is for fifth. Matt Woodruff and Chris K.A. Woodruff with a move down to the inside of the 18 to take that fifth spot. Checkered flag is out. Martin wins. Greg Atkins is second. Third is Dan Brown. Fourth is Brian Trim. Fifth is Matt Woodruff. Sixth goes to Chris K.A. Seventh. They pick it up off turn four down the front stretch. Green flag is out. Chris LeVere gets a good jump on the outside. He'll grab the lead in a turn two and up the back stretch the first time. Larry Archer settles into the number two spot in the 23. Keep an eye out on that 20 car. Jamie LaFountain moving up quickly on the outside. He will challenge Archer for the number two spot. Katie Brissett has the 03 running fourth. Chris Clark looks inside the 03 car. And Clark and Brissett will battle side by side up the back stretch. Josh LaVarnway also looking for a way through in that 13 car. Is there three wide going into turn three? Chris LeVere is your leader. He was opening week winner here at Airborne. And he looks awfully strong once again in that four car. The Fountain has now taken over the second spot, and we'll see if he's got anything for LeVere. The battle now starts to heat up for that third position. Larry Archer's 23. Speedy Brissett on the outside, Chris Clark on the inside, Josh LaVarnway right there as well as in the 13, we're halfway. LaVere maintains that advantage up the back stretch, but Fountain pulling away from that four car battle for the number three spot. And it's still Archer, LaVarnway, Brissett and Clark together for that third spot, two to go. The best battle for position is for that third spot. Archer drifts high. Speedy drifts high. Got the dirt kicked up off turn two. That's going to drop him back to the number six spot. White flag is out for Chris LeVere. Jamie LaFountain is going to have to settle for the number two spot. They're still mixing it up for that number three spot. Josh LaVarnway is now taking third. Archer on the outside runs fourth. Chris Clark looking to make a move on the bottom of the racetrack to take that fourth spot away. Checkered flag is out. Chris LeVair is your winner. Jamie LaFountain will finish second. LaVarnway gets the third spot. Fourth to Chris Clark and at the line, Larry Archer pulls off Speedy Brissett to take still the awaiting a driver on that number three car that is starting at the back. Here they come. Green flag is out. We've got trouble already. In the infield is Josh LeClaire, the number seven. Josh trying to get that car refired, but he appears to be clogged down in the water in turn one. And the yellow. Field rolls into turn four as we're ready for a start. Bomber qualifier, mo mini modified qualifier number two is under the green. Good jump on the outside for Levi Bombard in the 61. Mr. Cheese at Bill Desitel trying to hang right with him. Here comes Eric Riel in the 02 on the outside. Riel will move into the number two spot. Varno looks to the inside of Mr. Cheese. He wants to take that third spot away. They're three wide coming off turn four. Josh LaPorte, 45, trying to get it done on the outside. Varno got uh, collected a bit by the 41 of Tim LaFountain. Nice job by Jim Varno to hang on to that 07. Challenge for the lead up front on the inside. Eric Riel in the 0-2 moving through on the inside. Trying to stick right with him on the outside. It's the 61 of Levi Bombard. At the line, Riel is your leader. Bombard drops back to second. Here's a move on the inside by Josh Laporte. Laporte will take the second spot, dropping Bombard back to third. 
Here comes Josh LeClaire flying up on the inside. He started this qualifier at the back of the pack. He's now into the fourth spot. Halfway. Mr. Cheesin is back to fifth. Now we've got another challenge for the lead. Here comes Josh Laporte on the inside. Eric Riel right there on the outside. Riel with the nose in front. Laporte coming right back at him on the inside. Two to go and at the line, it's Laporte by half a car length. Riel will not give up on the outside, but up the back stretch. Josh Laporte opens up two car lengths on the 0-2. It's about five or six back to Josh LeClaire who continues to gain in the seven. But the laps are winding down, just one to go. Laporte leads the way in the 45 as they head up the back stretch the final time. Riel is second, LeClaire is third, Richner. He started deep in the field. He's moved himself into the number four spot with Mr. Cheese at fifth. Checkered flag is in the air, and your winner is Josh Laporte. Eric Riel finishes second. Josh LeClaire gets the third spot. Scott Richner fourth. And Mr. And 75, first time in a sportsman car for Cody Myers. All right, here they come off turn four. Green flag. John Duquette with the number 18, leading off of turn number two. Keith Pelkey in the number 24, running in the second spot. But here comes Nick Haywood with the number 29. Duquette finished fourth in the opening week feature event. The 29 of uh, Nick Haywood finished in the fifth spot as Nick tries to find room to the inside of the 24 of Keith Pelkey. Keith Pelkey finished in the 15th position in the uh, opening event with his number 24. Make that 18th position. Keith right now hanging on to that second spot, working on the outside. Nick Haywood running right with him, door to door for position number two. John Duquette checking out, just about dead even at the start finish line between the 29 and the 24. Jimmy Bushy with a good view of that battle. He's you know, plowing up the top of turn number two before he hangs on to that race car. Jamie Begor's trying to move on the inside. Begor's picked up uh, a couple of spots, passing the 21, the 68, and next up the 35 of Brian McGinley. Begor trying to find room on the inside of McGinley's number 35 as he charges from the rear of the field. The battle between the 29 and the 24 is still going on for that second position. They've been running side by side just about since the drop of the green flag. John Duquette pulling away. He's got a five car length advantage now between those two battles, uh, two cars rather, that continue to battle and run door to door. 29 and 24. 29 of Haywood, the 24 of Pelkey. Haywood trying to finish the pass over in turn number two, but Keith gets a bit of a run off the top of the second turn. As they go into the third turn, closing in is Jimmy Bushy in car number 11. There goes Duquette, losing it out front all by himself. Spins the car, flew it down. A, a bunch of other cars also spinning over in turns three and Keith four. Pelkey ready to go back at it. And now this time they'll be putting that side-by-side uh, -side racing on for the lead. Here they come off four green flag. It was a good start for Keith Pelkey on the outside of row number one. Keith and Nick are even running into the second turn. Jimmy Bushy's right behind him, the four of Brandon Atkins. After starting ninth, Jamie Begor has the 19 up into the fifth position. Nick Haywood with the nose out in front. There's a bobble. He drifts up the racetrack. Look at Jimmy Bushy on the inside. Bushy goes from third to the lead, almost up to 29. 29 gets a piece of the back of the 11 going into turn number one, but Jimmy Bushy's got the lead. The 29 pushed up the track in turn number four. That pushed the 24 up to the top of turn four as well. Open up the inside line. Jimmy Bushy with a daring move down to the inside. A good move by Bushy to go from third to first. Jimmy Bushy's the leader. Nick Haywood runs in the second spot. Jamie Beemore has moved from fifth to the third spot, working on the inside with his number 19. And Keith Pelkey slides back to the fourth position with a 24. Now Nick Haywood going back after the lead, looking to the inside of car number 11. Bushy works the middle line into turn number four. Haywood has that inside line. Off the fourth turn, down to the stripe. A good push off the top of the track from Jim Bushy down the front stretch. And he'll hang on to the lead. The 29 of Nick Haywood is right off his back bumper. A little wiggle off of two for Bushy in the 11. That allows the 29 to draw to the inside again. The 19 of Bigor has cleared Pelkey. He's into that third position. Let's see if he can chase down the top two cars and also throw his hat into the ring. Out front, Jimmy Bushy with car number 11. His lead just about three or four feet as we have a car that has spun over in turn number four. It's the 35 of Brian McGinley. Started this one to third. And Keith Pelkey in the number 24 running in the four spot. Here they come off turn number four. Green flag. Bushy in the 11, the 29 of Haywood leaning on each other in one and two. 
Off of turn number two, the top of the track comes to life for Nick Haywood, who goes to the lead on the outside. Bushy and 11 running in that second spot. Begor falling back a little bit in the 19. Keith Pelkey challenging on the outside for third as the white flag is out. Jimmy Bushy was just about four feet off the uh, start-finish line. The 29 had the lead, but Bushy hard into turn number two. That pushes up the track. That opens up room for Jamie Beagle on the inside. Good news for Nick Haywood. The battle's on for second and not out front, although Haywood is sideways into turn number four. He's got to get on the binders. Here they come off four for the win. It's going to be Nick Haywood. Jamie Beagle second, third. Jimmy from Plattsburgh, that's Robin Wood. Nine cars ready to run. Here they come off four. Green flag. Let's see if anybody can hang with Cody Benoit. Benoit was the third place on track finisher back in the opening week, but he was disqualified. They had problems with the shocks that led to his disqualification. It appears as though there's something leaking out of the one as he comes racing off the fourth turn along the front stretch. And that is going to bring out a yellow flag. 79, a Stevie 7 of Howard Stoner and Robin Wood in the 61. Robin falling back and then trying to get on the gas and close the gap from the back of the pack. There's the green flag. Travis Bruno from the outside of the front row will take the lead off of turn number two. He works the top of the racetrack to the point. Now here comes the 44 of Tyler Terry to the inside of Mike Shagnon's 86. The 57 of Howard Stoner looking to move up. He's got Gordy Stone on his door with the number 77. Stoner has room on the inside. Stone's going to go down to the inside line right in front of Dan Sullivan's number three. That allows the 61 of defending track champ Robin Wood to move to the outside of Stone. He'll fly past the 77 as car 61 is on the move. Johnny Icabingo, 61 of Robin Wood, moves in front of Stone 77. That'll put him in fifth, and now he's trying to take fourth away from Mike Shagnon's 86. Shagnon works on the outside of the racetrack. He'll fall back to fifth, Robin Wood to fourth, and now he will size up the 57 of Howard Stoner. Out front, it's Travis Bruno in the 33, the 44 of Tyler Terry running in the second spot. Stoner is third in the 57. Robin Wood is fourth in car 61. Wood trying to close in on the back bumper of Stoner's 57. Then it's the 86 of Mike Shagnon running in fifth. Sixth is the 77 of Gordy Stone. Stone spins over in turn number two right in front of Dan Sullivan. Sullivan with a nice job to get on the binders and uh, avoid the spinning number 77 car. And that's going to bring out a yellow flag as Gordy Stone spins. All right, ready for a restart. Three laps complete. Third qualifier for the sportsman. Second qualifier, rather, for the sportsman. Back under green. 33 of Travis Bruno, the 44 of Tyler Terry. And here comes the 61 of Robin Wood. Travis Bruno sideways as that car is pointed to the infield, and that's where it's going. Travis Bruno's 33 goes down to the infield, and that is going to bring out a yellow flag. Bruno got the Last car complete. rolling. In Here they come into turn number four. They come down the front stretch. Green flag is back out. Tyler Terry finished 13th in the opening week with his number 44 car. Showing the way in this qualifier, Howard Stoner in the number 57 had an eighth place run back on May 7th. And of course, that third place car, the defending track champion, was the winner two weeks ago. He's running in third, trying to size up Stoner perhaps for the second position. Stoner running well on the outside. Robin Wood trying to move up on the inside, and they're just about even now for the second spot. Robin sticks the nose out in front for second. Howard Stoner tries to fight back on the outside, but Robin Wood drives it deep into turn three and four, makes it stick down on the inside. Tyler Ter Terry was loose off of turn number four, and at the stripe, Robin Wood had the lead. Had the lead by about a half foot. And the 61 continues to work through on the inside. Robin Wood, who started dead last in this qualifier, has the lead. Tyler Terry in the 44, fighting a loose condition. Speaking of loose, there goes the 57 right around over in turn number four. The back end of that 57 just jumped right out from underneath. Our second qualifier. First qualifier seemed to finish about a half an hour ago. Do you even remember who won that qualifier, Rick? Do you remember who it was? I'm putting Nick you Haywood. on the spot. That's right, Nick Haywood. Robin Wood out front and pulling away from Dan Sullivan. The lead is about three or four car lengths. Sullivan running in the second spot. Travis Bruno third with a 33. They're three wide running for the fifth position. Tyler Terry backed out of it and wisely in that number 44 as he was going to head right towards the turn four wall if he continued on that path on the outside with Howard Stoner on the inside of turn four and Gordy Stone in the middle of the 77. Robin Wood checking out. The battle perhaps on for second. Dan Sullivan in car number three. 
And then Travis Bruno in the number 33. Here comes Howard Stoner to the inside of Mike Shagnon's car. They're battling for the fourth position. And Tyler Terry is trying to take the sixth spot away from the 77 of Gordy Stone. Big lead out front for Robin Wood, and there's just two laps to go for Robin. Dan Sullivan's number three in that second spot. Travis Bruno is running uh, just about uh, half car length off of his back bumper. And it's a good gap back to the 57 of Stoner. Two car lengths to Shagnon, who is in fifth. Sixth is still Gordy Stone, who is holding off the challenge of Tyler Terry, who is still working on the outside. White flag is out for Robin Wood. Robin Wood's lead is almost the full backstretch. As he started dead last in this qualifier, moved methodically to the front, and he wins going away. Qualifier number two goes to Robin Wood, second to Dan Sullivan with a three. Travis Bruno finishes third. Howard Stoner fourth, fifth to Tyler Terry, sixth. Mike 12 cars to qualify, Rob. 12 cars to qualify. We're sending some of these guys home. Green flag. So only the top 12 machines will get in. Jimmy Introne at the nine. Got a piece of Max Vienna in the 25. The 0-2 of Mike Rio is on the move. They're three wide towards the back. You gotta go. If you're not in the top 12, you're going home. of Jason Bruno, the 100 of LaBresh running the very top of the racetrack around turns one and two. Out front, Lindemann now, leading by three car links. Here comes Cam Grady around the outside of the 66 of Bruno, who runs third. Mike Liddy is in the fourth spot. Fifth is Aaron Barbie in the B3. Sixth is Terry Hayes in the 01. Seventh is Pat McGrail in the 10. Eighth is Mike Wells. Make it eighth, Jimmy Ryan. Ninth is Mike Wells. Running in 10th is Max Vien. Running in 11th is Mike Rio. And the 12th and final spot right now is that car number nine for Jimmy and Trone. So keep an eye on car number nine. And Trone has the heat on. He's in the final transfer spot. Everybody behind the nine right now would end up not racing in the feature event. So you got to get past car nine and Jimmy and Trone if you want to be in the main event. Andy Lindemann is the leader. Cam Brady in the 27 looks to the inside off turn number two. Brady got a good run, but had to back out of it. As Lindemann took the line away on the inside. Running in third is Jason Bruno. Mike Finney runs right off of his back bumper in the fourth spot. Fifth, it is Aaron Barnaby in the B3. Terry Hayes still six. Jimmy Ryan moving up. Look out problems for Cam Brady in the 27. Brady is headed back to the garage area. Something amiss on the front of that 27 machine. Brady will not make the feature event tonight. Out front, it is still Andy Lindemann. Jason Burrow is second. Mike Finney is third. Aaron Barnaby is fourth. Fifth is Terry Hayes. Sixth is Jim Ryan. Seventh is Pat McGrail. Eighth is the 76 of Mike Wells. Ninth is Mike Rio. Running in tenth is Max Vienne. Eleventh is now Jimmy Introne. And the twelfth and final transfer spot, now car 100 for Roche and LaBresh. LaBresh will have the final transfer position with the number 100 car. Tommy Jock sizing him up on the inside. Jock looks to the inside with a 53. He goes to 12th. LaBresh back to 13th. 14th is Adam Barnaby. 15th is Chris Vernal. Now Vernal, of course, had a problem in his qualifier. Dan Brown spun right in front of him. But Vernal finished 7th last week in the 50-lap feature event. Right now, he's not even in a position to race the feature event tonight after problems for car number 97. White flag is out for Andy Lindemann. Lindemann in car number 3. Jason Burrow on the 66, dives down on the inside. Burrow and I thought about making a bid for the win. Here they come, run to turn number four. Bruno's on the inside, Lindemann's on the outside. Checkered flag is out, down to the stripe. It's Lindemann by a foot. Bruno second, third to Finney. Fourth to Barnaby, fifth Hayes, sixth Ryan, seventh McGrail, eighth to uh, Wells, then ninth Riel, tenth Vienne. And then some goodies to give away as they're moving along the front stretch as well. So look, keep an eye out for them. And joining the field at the back of the pack is Jordan Lindgrave in car number 17. Well, that's what you call a big start for Josh Duravaz. He just blasts by from his outside front row starting position to assume the lead up the back stretch. And he quickly has opened up 10 car lengths on the 21 of Travis Sherman. Duravaz just blowing away already. He won opening week. He's been a contender for the championship the past two years has had misfortune happen in the final week of the season. Last year, it was the final lap of the season and the final turn when he lost the championship. He leads this qualifier, and he leads it for fun. 
Travis Sherman is second. We do have a good battle going on for the number three spot. Curtis McGrave Jr. in the 72 and Chad Hendry in the 60. They run side by side for that number three spot. McGrave will now take third, dropping Hendry back to fourth. Rob Sign runs fifth in the three car. And it's Kevin Martineau in the 27. John Michael Brissett in the 14. The 58 for Bill Joyle Sr. Another gap back to David Brissett in the 14B. Bombers are halfway in their qualifier. And Josh Duravaj continues to dominate in the new 88. He's got about 15 car lengths now on Travis Sherman, who's going to have to try and hang on to that second spot because Curtis LeGrave Jr. is on the move in the 72. Two laps to go, and LeGrave is closed right into that back bumper of the 21 of Sherman. Up the back stretch, Sherman has the advantage on LeGrave by just about a car length. White flag will be in the air this time by for Josh Durabaj. He had the lead in this qualifier two weeks ago on the final lap. The right front wheel came off. Turn two. He's good this time up the back stretch. And he could coast home from here. LaGrave looks to the inside of the 21 of Sherman. They continue to battle for the new number two spot. But up front, there's no doubt about your winner. Josh Duravaj is home free. Travis Sherman holds on for the number two spot. Curtis LeGrave Jr. gets the number third spot. As Sherman was second, Chad Hendry finishes fourth. And Rob Sign rounds out the top five in car number three. This one, 25 of Kevin Bruton will set the pace. Here they come off turn number four. Green flag. Robert Gordon with the H2O running on the outside in the turn number two. As here comes Joe Daniels thinking maybe three wide to the inside. Joe Warren works the middle line into turn three. On the outside, the H2O of Gordon. Kevin Booten leading the field. Joe Warren, a little bobble going into turn number four. He had to get on the line. Joe Daniels in that seven car. Booten leading lap one. The H2O of Gordon running in the second spot. Then it's Daniels in third. Fourth is the 13 of Warren. The 11 of Lance Raptoy running in the fifth spot, but he's got his nose to the inside of Warren looking for position number four. They're side by side for six. Josh Terry's in car number 48. The outside of Terry in car number three is Dave Gray. Terry gets that sixth spot. Gray falls back to seven. Running eight is Don Franklin with the 69. That is the 357 of Curtis Seymour and the 86 of Rick Doner rounding out the top 10, but he's got a car at his door. That's the 70 of Jason McClatchy. Dave Drake's number three is on the move. Drake in car number three. Trying to get to the outside as we've got a challenge for the lead out front. 25 of Kevin Booth working the middle of the racetrack. The H2O of Robert Gordon working on the inside. Booth gets a good run off the top of turn number two. Now Gordon looks to the inside into three and four. Right behind Robert Gordon is the seven of Joe Daniels. Those two drivers, of course, had the great battle two weeks ago. The H2O of the seven. They run second and third early in the 25 lap distance for the Renegades. The 25 of Kevin Booth is pulled every lap. He started on point and now through four laps has the H2O at the inside of turn number four. Booth in on the outside. The H2O on the inside racing to the strike. And at the strike it looked like Robert Gordon had the lead by inches. Booth has been getting a good run off of turn number two. Right there. That's where he's hooked up and that's where he vaults back to the lead. Down the back stretch. The H2O fights back. Gordon seems to be hooked better off of turn number four. That's where he's getting the run, and that's where he would get it two weeks ago as well. At the stop, it's still Robert Gordon in the lead. Joe Daniels right in the mix with the seven car. Gordon surges out front. Booten in the 25 tries to get that good bolt again off the top of the track with a progressive banking. Drives hard into three, puts the nose back in front. The H2O comes back on the inside. Here comes Robert Gordon trying to finish the pass, and Joe Daniels is trying to go right to him. At the strike, it's Gordon by a foot. Robert Gordon on the inside, 25 of Putin on the outside. This time, Putin again drifts to the top of two, gets a good run off of two, and he'll put the nose back out in front. Robert Gordon with the h is going to have to deal with a slower car. 25, Putin goes to the outside of the 0-2, and Gordon sees that slower car in front, backed off the gas a little bit, and allows Putin to check out to a two-car length advantage. Bill Daniels running a car length off the back bumper of the H2O, and now Putin has opened it up to three. Robert Gordon with the H2O, perhaps just backing off a little bit with that slower car in front. Didn't want to get pinned behind it. He's got plenty of time to chase back down to the 25. Booten continuing to run that middle line around the track. And he drifts at the top 
a two, gets the good bite off two and pulls away. Let's work through the field with now nine laps complete. This time by 10 will go up on the board. Bruton leads. Gordon and the Angel is second. Third is Joe Daniels with car seven. Fourth is Connor Rowland and Roland Rockjoy. Fifth is the 13 of Joe Warren. Running at six is the 43 of Josh Terry. Seventh is the 69 of Don Franklin. Running in eighth is Jason McClatchy in the 70. Ninth is Dave Drake in the three. Running in 10th is Rick Doner. 11th is Curtis Seymour in the 357. Running in 12th is Dan Dubuque in the 61. 13th is Mark Karen in the five. 14th is Bob Dragoon. 15th is Andrew Bordeaux. 16th is Metalman. 17th is Bill Doyle. And those are the 17 cars on the lead lap. Is chasing down the back of the pack is the 25 of Kevin Booten, whose lead is now up to five cars. Booten has pulled away. Ever since working around the slower car of uh, Collins, Booten has been able to pull away from the H2O of Robert Gordon. And uh, Kevin continues to run comfortably around the outside of the racetrack. He works a middle line through the turns and then goes to the top of the track coming off the turn to take advantage of that progressive banking. Number of cars running towards the back as we mentioned Doyle was 17th and the last car on the lead lap and Kevin Booth's gonna have to deal with those cars. Doyle working on the outside now moves down to the inside. The leader will catch them in the turn that might allow the H2O to close the gap a little bit but now he'll pull away along the front stretch. Gordon's gonna catch these cars on the front stretch so that may help him out. Robert Gordon with the H2O, Joe Daniels with car number seven. Daniels is about Two car lengths off the bumper of Gordon with the H2O. And uh, Kevin Booten is uh, really stretching it out now as he works around some of these slower cars. He's put the 57 down a lap, the two. A uh, metal man's gone down a lap. Bob Begley's 36 has gone down a lap. And the 08 of Andrew Bordeaux has just gone down a lap. As Kevin Booten, his lead is now about 10 car lengths. Make it almost 12 car lengths over the H2O of Robert Gordon. Next car in line to go down a lap would be Mark Karen. This 02 car of Jimmy Collins is already one lap down. Kevin Booth in the 25, 16 laps complete. Nine remain as we head the 25. H2O of Robert Gordon still in second. He's got three car links on the seven of Joe Daniels. And it's a good gap back to the 11 of Lance Raptoy. Running in the fourth spot is Raptoy. Running in position number five is they are running side by side off of turn number four. Joe Warren trying to put a lap on the 36 of Bob Dragoon. And it's Josh Terry also trying to put a lap on Dragoon as he is in the sixth position. Seventh is the big daddy Don Franklin. McClatchy is eighth. Ninth is Craig and tenth is still Rick Doner. Those cars running in the top 10 with 17 laps complete. On Vermont's Kevin Booten. Driving the quality cut sawing, yipe stripes, direct auto body 25, the Airborne Speedway 2010 track champion in the Renegade division, leading by 12 car lengths over Robert Gordon. Gordon feeling the heat from Joe Daniels, who has closed in. Daniels was two to three car lengths off the back bumper of Gordon for that second spot. And now he looks to the inside, trying to take the second position away from Robert Gordon, who is working on the top of the racetrack. Daniels losing a couple of car lengths as he tried to use the inside line. But uh, Gordon found good bite on the top of two, and he was able to pull away a little bit. Lap number 20 goes up on the board. Just five laps remaining for Kevin Booten in the number 25. Robert Gordon's H2O is still in that second spot, and he has pulled back away from Joe Daniels in car number seven. Wasn't that a car length? Now it's almost five between the H2O and the seven. It's a good 14 car lengths between the seven and the 11, who is in the fourth spot. And it's Joe Warren in fifth, Josh Terry in sixth. The seventh position, the 69 of Don Franklin. Jason McClatchy with a very good showing. First time out with the number 70. Challenging Franklin for the seventh position. First car race in turns one and two. Running in the ninth spot, it's Dave Drake. And in 10, it's still Rick Doner in the number 86. There goes Bob Dragoon spinning over in turn number two. This could bring out a yellow flag and slow the pace. It will. Yellow flag comes out Vermont on the outside of row number one. Then it's Saranax Joe Daniels in the seven. And Fairfax Vermont's Lance Raptoy in 11. Green flag. That's a good restart for Robert Gordon with the H2O. He's got that outside line. That's where Booten wants to be. That's where he's been fast all race long, and they are even in the middle of the backstretch. Black flag is out for uh, Bob Drago's 36 again as we watch out front where they are still running side by side, door to door off turn number four. Down to the strike they come Gordon had the lead by about six inches. The 25 of Booten is on the inside. The H2O of Gordon is on.
the outside, surging on the top of the racetrack, Robert Gordon with the lead. A 25 of Booten comes back after him on the inside. The 7 and the 11 run side by side for the third spot. Off of turn number four, popsicle sticks are out. Two of them. with the lead by half a car length. The 25 comes back after him on the inside. He's got room to drift up the track, but the H2O's got the bite on top. Robert Gordon pulls away into turn number three. The 25 comes back after him on the inside. Kevin Booten wants to get to the top of the track, but he can't get there as the white flag is out. Robert Gordon leads by half a car length. He's found something on the top. Gordon maintaining the lead down the backstretch. Booten looks to the inside. He's going to have to make it here in three and four. Robert Gordon looking to go back to back. Takes it to the top of the track. It'll be a drag race for the win. Down to the stripe. It's Robert Gordon, two for two. Kevin Booth in his second. Third to Lance Raptoy. Fourth to Joe Daniels. Fifth to Joe Warren. Sixth to the big daddy, Don Franklin. Seventh to Jason McClatchy. Then it's Josh Terry at the 43. And it looked like the uh, 86 of Rick Donor in the three for Dave Drake. In just a moment, Rob Bowles will be heading down to Victory Lane. And for the second consecutive event here at the Airborne Speedway, he'll be chatting with Robert Gordon. Robert was one of the guests in the interview segment with Ricky St. Clair on the Motor Motorola Sports Magazine program. The interviews were taped earlier over in the garage area. You'll be able to see that online at plattsburgh.com. And it will also be on Charter Cable Channel. Climbing out of his car, he's two for two. Everybody give him a nice round of applause. Robert Gordon gets the win again in the versatile trailer sales renegade division. Well, the yellow flag comes out with four laps to go. At that point, uh, you get right back into it and your car really seemed to come to life on the outside. Did. Before that point, it was Kevin Grace. Uh, thank God for the yellow. Kevin Booten's car was really hooked on the outside as well, and we were kind of thinking it might be trouble for him down on the inside. He was really getting uh, going off the top of turn number two. Yeah, I think he was, and when he when he couldn't do that, and it, it just benefited me. Well, you you can't start the season any better than this. No. Two two for two for the H two O. I won two in a row, but I've never won three in a row. The fifty lapper next week would be awesome. All right, Robert Gordon. But we're ready to run. 30 machines strong, 30 laps the distance. Brian Trim, Craig Riel setting the pace off row number one. Here they come. Green flag. Real good start to this one. For the 28 of Brian Trim as he pulls away from Craig Riel. Pierre Bertillon looks to make a move. Look at the 24 already starting to roll. That Patrick Dupree 24 car thought about trying to split the uh, th th thin uh, thread through the needle, rather, between the 46 and the 327. But then he thought better. This is a real interesting start because you've got some fast cars at the front. You've got some slower cars that are in the middle that qualified well. And we'll see how this shakes out. They're running three wide just outside the top ten. Vince Quinville backed out of it with a 78. They really box it up coming off a turn. Bears in trouble with a 46. A bear takes it down to the infield, and we have a yellow flag. Right behind George Foley in the ninth spot. Don't forget that 1X of Todd Stone. He's certainly in the mix as well. All right, here they come. Green flag. Ryan Trim to 28. And one of Bertillon on the outside. Craig Riel slowing that inside line down. That outside line is rolling. The 90 of Martin Juan moving to fourth. Around the outside of Craig Riel, it's the one of Atkins moving as well. Craig Atkins moves into the top five. Martin Juan went to the fourth spot. Pierre Bertillon has taken the lead away from Brian Trim, who runs second. Looking to the inside is Dan Brown with a 327. Now outside Brown, here comes the Gamash Truck Summer 90 from Martin Roy. Running in fifth behind him is Atkins. Putting heat on Atkins is Patrick Dupree on the inside. Pierre Bertillon shows the way. It's a four car length advantage over Brian Trim. Then Dan Brown in the 327. Martin Roy in the 90. Wheel to wheel, they run for that fifth spot. Patrick Dupree looks inside of Atkins. As uh, here comes Dupree to the inside, he'll take that. Bertillon also looks inside the Atkins machine. Laps complete, Pierre Pertillon leads. Brian Trim runs in the second spot. Third is Dan Brown. Fourth is Martin Lois. Fifth is Patrick Dupree. Sixth is Greg Atkins. Running in the seventh spot is George Foley. Running in eighth is Tom Stone. Running ninth is Greg Riel. Tenth is Leon Don 
14th, Craig Hornsby. 15th is Vince Quinville in the 78. Running in 16th, it is Matt Woodruff in the 55. Then it's Chris Kaye and the three of Andy Powell. Rounding out the top 20, the 16 of Jimmy Ryan, the 10 of Pat McGrill. Pierre Bertillon is checking out on the 28 of Bryant Trim. Martin Roy has not been able to challenge on the 327 of Dan Brown, which has been surprising. Patrick Dupree coming to the inside of that 90 car, perhaps trying to make a move for fourth on the inside. Dupree and Martin Roy, Roy rather, running wheel to wheel into turn number three. Roy hanging on to that spot for now, closing in on the back bumper of the 327. Dupree with him on the inside. Dan Brown running strong in that third spot. But out front right now, Pierre Martino is setting a very fast pace. He's a third of the way home this time by. Lap number 10 about to go up on the scoreboard. And it's lap number 10 that is led by Peter Bertio. Problems at the back of the pack for Max Vienna in the number 25. Vienna's off the pace. Let's see if he'll duck to the infield. Waiting for him. He will drop down to the inside, and the green stays out. Vienna, can he make it into the infield? Is he out of harm's way? At this point, yes. Race control wants to keep the running. So the green flag stands out, stays out by the Bertiola in the one. Leading by 15 car lengths over a trip of the 28. And it's still Dan Brown running third. Martin Adouin holding on to that fourth spot. And it's the pistol Patrick Dupree who was running in fifth. Sixth is George Foley, but he's a good 10 car lengths off the back bumper of the 24 of Dupree. And that's a big gap back to the one of Atkins and the one X of Todd Stone. And Leon Gagno and Andy Haywood in the 80. Those cars running in the top 10. Bertillo running up on the back of the pack. He's about to put a lap on the 9 of Jimmy Introne. As his lead is half the backstretch of O'Brien Trim. Martin Watt says it is go time. As he works to the outside of Dan Brown, he'll go around Brown and hit third. Now Patrick Dupree wants to work to the outside as well. Brown pushed him right up the, up the track on the front stretch, almost to the wall. And now Dupree wants to go to the rim. He had to get on the back because the 327 broke the momentum of the 24. Dupree again looks outside. Martin Watt trying to make up some ground on the 28 of Brian Trim. He's halfway home, and uh, this one is Pierre Bertillon in the one as we're halfway through this 30 lot feature event. Brian Trim goes around the nine of Introne. Now the 90 of Martin Watt will move to the inside. Introne goes to a higher line. That'll force the fast cars through on the inside off the turn of the four. Dan Brown trying to hold on to his spot right now, running it fourth, and he is held up to 24, Patrick Dupree is the better leader for Matt Woodruff is off the pace, and that's going to bring out a yellow flag. Yellow flag is out for Matt Woodruff in the 55. That'll slow the pace. He's in the 16th is Pat McGrail. Uh, scratch that, Chris Kaye is 16th with the number 18. And it's Jimmy Ryan and the number 60. Green flag! Martin Watt goes to the top of the racetrack, and here he goes around Brian Trent for the second spot. Martin Roy going to second. Is he eyeing the top spot, trying to take it away from Pierre Bertillon? No, not yet. Bertillon will get right on top of the track. Bertillon leads by a car length. The 28 of Trim running in third. Dupree is able to move around. Oh, we got cars spinning over at turn number two. Craig Rio, CO2, gets into the 11 of turn number four, gets on the hammer. There's the green flag. Martin Roy goes back to the outside. Bertillon tries to run right. Side of the little backstretch. Bertillon slams the door shut. Martin looks back high into turn number four. Bertillon pulls away along the front stretch. It's two car lengths. Here, Bertillon leading him into one and two. Martin Juan running right with him. Contact with the Duno 28 and 24. Could be problems, big time problems for Patrick Dupree. He's broken on the left front. Yellow flag. That left front is broke. The outside as they're ready to take the green flag. Green flag is back out. Here comes Martin Roy hustling to the outside of Pierre Bertillon. Bertillon on the hammer off to Martin Roy is flying around the outside. Let's see if Bertillon can come back after him on the inside. Roy is hot to the top of turn number four. Bertillon trying to hang with him. Not going to do it. Martin Roy leads by a car length of the strike. Bertillon comes back after him again on the inside. Working on that right rear gets Martin Roy pulling away to three car lengths. Bertillon running in second. Brian Trim is running third. Fourth is Dan Brown. Here comes a car after Brown. That's George Foley. George Foley goes to fourth. Dan Brown's in trouble. The 
327 is off the pace. Might have a tire going down. Dan Brown is going to look around on top of the racetrack. George Foley goes to the fourth spot. Running in fifth is Greg Atkins. Sixth is now Andy Haywood. Seventh is Leon Daniel. Eighth is Vince Quinville. And running in the ninth spot behind Quinville, Jason Brewer in the 66th. And it's Chris K.A. in the 18th, rounding out the top 10. Dan Brown with the best run of his career. It's come to a halt, and the 327 is limping back to the garage. Martin Watt is checking out up front. The 90 lifting that front front tire right up off the racetrack. On the turn number two is flying away from Pierre Martillon. Running the fastest lap of the race, that last lap, Martin Watt is checking out. It's already a half front stretch lead over Pierre Martillon for the JM Racing number one. Yellow flag is out. to turn three. Now he's on the hammer coming through turn number four to the green flag. George Foley looks outside the 28 of Brian Trim for third. Trim trying to hang on to that third spot. Foley's with him, wheel to wheel on the outside. Brian Trim on the inside, George Foley on the top of the track. He's got third. Leading by 10. Pierre Bertillo second. George Foley is third. Foley will try to put on a late race charge to get to that second spot. Running in fourth is Brian Trim now. Running in fifth, Greg Atkins. Atkins with a second place finish opening week. Running in the top five. Andy Haywood putting pressure on Atkins to get into that top five. Right now, Haywood is in the sixth spot. Seventh is Leon Gagne, Vince Quinville in the top ten. He finished third opening week. He's running eighth. Running in ninth is Jason Bruno. In tenth is Chris Keegan in the number 18. Martin Juan's lead is half the backstretch. Inside five laps remaining now for the Gosh Truck Center number 90. Lap 26 goes up on the board. And unless the 90 breaks, the outcome is no longer in doubt. Here, Bertio with the one, trying to hang on a second. George Foley is closing. It's a car length and a half. Good battle on the racetrack for fifth between the one New York and the 80. That's Atkins and Andy Hickman. Atkins from Los Angeles Forks. And Andy from the 80 from Morrisonville. As Andy tries to make a move to get to the top five with two laps to go. Popsicle sticks are out for Martin Watt. Chat with a Napierville, Quebec driver. Perhaps we'll see another Martin shuffle atop the roof of a 90 car. A nice run tonight for George of the season. Go downstairs, Rob, take uh, it. All right, Rick, will we see the Martin shuffle? Will they go up on top of the roof? Ah, uh, it's the Martin shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> Martin will get his helmet off and then he'll come on over. We'll get a word with the number 90 team. The Right rear tire in much better shape this week than two weeks ago. Martin getting off his helmet. Martin just about set to come on over. 
using a uh, late race restart to work around Pierre Bertillome and take home the checkered flag tonight, his first of 2011. Here comes Martin Roy. Congratulations, Felicitation Martin. A late race restart. You go around the outside of Pierre Bertillome, right where you always like to do it, over on turn number two on the top. Yeah. It's tough tonight, it's hot, the asphalt is hot, the race with the, with the sun is difficult for, for me, but thank you everybody to come every week, thank you very much, and thank you Gamma Shrug Center and Nemkins. Martin, an opening week, there was problems with the tires, the extra distance, tell me about that. Yeah, last week, two, uh, two, uh, Cuts. yeah, two cars and two, my rear tire, two flat tire for the rest of the race. The, that's the reason why to finish six, but uh, the car is perfect, but well, certainly a, a good uh, job by you to get back to victory lane. You showed patience early on in the race. Did you do that on purpose? Maybe not uh, go to the outside as early as you normally do? Yeah, by patient to, tonight because uh, the, the sunny is uh, the track is very uh, slicky uh, and f is more patient for that. And the sun goes down and me go fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the key then. Sun goes down, Martin goes fast. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Martin. Thank you very much. All right, Martin, well, everybody, he gets. Chris Lavere starts on the pole looking for two in a row. Green. Why is that? Lavera gets a good jump from the inside, but here comes Jamie LaFountain quickly to challenge in the 20. Lavera on the outside. LaFountain has a nose in the bottom of the racetrack. He'll be able to hold that inside line. Lavera still maintains that lead as they come off turn four. Lavera is your leader. LaFountain one second. Josh Laporte in the third spot. Josh Levine weighs 13. Car has worked his way to the number four spot. Look out. LaFountain's in the bunker kicking up the dirt. That allows Laporte to get by and take second. And gives Lavarway the inside line for the third spot. Lavarway sideways coming off that fourth turn. He'll lose a couple of spots with a nice job of hanging out of it. Now Lavarway gets into the seven of Josh Leclerc. And Leclerc did a nice job to keep that seven car going straight. Already Chris Lavare has started to check out. Josh Laporte trying to hang on to that number two spot. First year in the mini modified division for the driver of the 45 car. You are on second as a graduate of the bomber division here at Airborne Speedway. Jamie LaFountain runs by himself in the third spot in the 20. Then the battle is for that fourth spot. Leclerc in the seven, Lavardway in the 13, Rio in the 0 2. The 77 o'clock. We've got trouble up in turn three. Bill Desitel has made contact with one of the tires that mark the inside of the infield. Made of that Keysville lap of mini modifieds. Ready to get back underway. And it's another good start for Chris LeVere. He's going to take that lead. And it's another good start for Jamie LaFountain. Right on the back bumper of the four car. He'll move through and take the second spot. Dropping Josh Laporte back to the number three spot. Here comes Josh LeClaire moving up quickly on the outside in the seven car. He's going to battle Josh Laporte there together coming off turn four. A little bit of contact between the 45 and the seven. We've got the X7 going for a spin off the top of turn four. Uh, the caution flag will come out one more time on lap five. In Time Warner's hometown cable if you live in the northern tier. And don't forget, starting this week, we're going to be giving away a free pass every week through the television program to the racing action here at Airborne. LaVere, LaFountain, that's your front row. It's a much more even start as they come off turn four. Down to the green flag. Can Jamie LaFountain get it done on the outside as they hit into turns two and three? No. There's contact between LaFountain and Laporte. Both of them able to hold on to those second and third place positions. Here comes Chris Clark making a three-wide move. We've got a car sideways on the backstretch. Tim LaFountain's 41, Mr. Cheesed in the 36, as well as the 69 of John Bradley all involved. The cars tried to get rolled up. Scott Richter's 21 went for a lap five. Take two, restart. Again, it's Laver and LaFountain running together as they come off turn four. Back to the green. 
once again, Jamie LaFountain able to stick right with that four car. But as they come off turn four, LaVere takes a half a car length advantage. They're four wide up the back stretch. Here comes LaFountain back on the outside to pull right alongside LaVere as they come off turn four. LaVere will lead it. LaPorte now looks to the inside of Jamie LaFountain. Josh LaPorte takes second as LaFountain dropping back on the outside. Trying to get back to the bottom of the racetrack in front of the 0-3 of Speedy Brissett. Brissett has the inside line. LaFountain watch that inside line. A little bit of contact between the two as they come off turn four to the halfway point. Speedy Brissett now gets by the 20 of Jamie LaFountain. And here comes Chris Clark in the 77. He'll run right alongside that 20 car as they head into turn number three. LaFountain now gets the 20 to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll hold on to his fourth spot. LaVare has started to open up a lead. But a good battle going on right now, especially for position four, five, and six. Here comes Speedy on the move in that 0-3 car, looking to the inside of Josh Laporte. Speedy Brissett sticks a nose in front. He's going to take second as they come off turn four. Set on the inside, but four on the outside. They run together, and it's four cars battling for that fourth spot. LaFountain in the 20, Josh LaVarnway in the 13, Bob Clark in the 77, and Scott Richner in the 21. Throw a blanket on all four of those. So as LaVera continues to coast up front, we've got some great battles going on for the rest of the top five. Now on the outside, Speedy Brissett drives around the 45 of Josh Laporte to take second, and we'll see if he's got anything for Chris LaVere. Josh LaVarnway has taken the fourth spot away from Jamie LaFount. And Rob Clark's going to take fifth. Scott Richter looks to move up on the inside to take that sixth spot away. For the majority of this race, Jamie LaFountain has been stuck on the outside and it has not worked. Brissette has closed the gap to about five car lengths. On the floor of Rivera, caution flag is out. We've got the Larry Archer 23 slow inside and Sir Speedy on the outside. Check the restart. lavera has been getting great jumps. Here they come. Down to the green there, even at the strike. Can the 03 make it stick on the outside? If he can, it's going to be a drag race up the back stretch. Here comes Speedy. Brissette on the outside. Lavere on the inside, side by side as they come off turn four. Two laps to go. Josh Larnway trying to stick his nose in that battle. He gets to the outside of Josh Laporte to take the third spot. Up the back stretch again. Brissette sticks a nose in front. LaVere battling right back on the inside. They'll come off turn four together one more time. White flag is out. Chris LaVere in the four, half a car length advantage. He drifts up high on turn two, but Speedy's right there in the zero three. Brissette just a Nose behind as they come into turn three. Now into four. Brissett gives it all he's got off turn four. Down the stretch to the checkered. Chris LeVere, two in a row. Speedy Brissett will finish second. Third spot goes to the 13 of Josh LeVarnway with Scott Richard to turns three and four. But Chris LeVere was able to use that inside line to his advantage and pick up his third consecutive victory, two in a row here, to start the 2011 season. I can't until we're done this. So just a minute, we're going to go down trackside to Rob Knowles, who is 
about ready to chat with Chris LeVere once he gets the four car down into victory lane. Thanks. We'll get uh, another word with Chris LeVere, who goes back to back just like Robert Gordon did in the Renegade division. Chris going back to back in the uh, mini modifieds. It looked like it was going to be a fairly easy win for Chris, but late race caution set up a. Uh, an exciting final few laps with Speedy Brissett. Here is Chris LeVere. Congratulations, Chris. That yellow flag late in the race, and it certainly was a good duel with Speedy. Oh, yeah, that, that made it. Uh, that made the race. I, I, I was so happy when the, the caution came out. I actually, you don't want to really hear that, but I enjoy racing with cars better than racing by myself. Well, it makes it a lot more interesting to watch, that's for sure. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of frayed drivers back in the garage area that aren't too happy with one another, but you're one of the few guys that's going to say, I don't have anybody to be mad at racing out front and racing clean. Yeah, I've been lucky the last couple of weeks. Uh, good draws put me on the pole, and I pretty much have nothing to worry about, but look ahead. But you know what that means? Two wins, you're starting towards the back of the pack from now on, buddy. Oh, yeah, I'll be uh, there in the back. It'll be hard to get to the front then. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank my sponsors to Evergreen Auto Center. Uh, to Saranac Lake, Outside Groove, Upstate Vinyl Graphic, uh, so many people, you know, Mike, Jeff, everybody that puts on the show here, you guys, it's, it's awesome to be able to come here every Saturday night. Well, congratulations, two for two. Thank you very much. All right, Chris there off to a great start. Nice yeah, drive, One for one, looking to go two for two. Here they come, off turn number four, green flag. Big on the inside, Wood on the outside. Robin Wood sticks the nose out front, and there he goes. Taking the lead on lap number one off the top of turn number two. Robin Wood goes to the point. Jamie Beagle runs in the second spot. Jimmy Bushy, three, Dan Sullivan over at turn number four. And what a great job by everybody else in the field as they managed to miss. And uh, it is Beagle and Wood on the front row. Green flag. Bigor supply number 19 on the inside. It's the Ganyanka Bingo 61 on the outside. We've got cars spinning near the back. This time it's Gordy Stone in the 77. 80s. And uh, he was Don Jerry before there was a Don Jerry. All right, ready to run. Take three. Green flag. Good start that time for Jamie Bigor on the inside. Robin Wood doesn't have him by turn number two. Jamie Bigor has the lead in the middle of the back stretch. Now here comes Robin Wood on the outside. He's at his door. He's making the pass towards turn number four off the top of the track. Down to the start finish line and Robin Wood has the lead. He'll get paid for leading lap number one. Jamie Bigor runs in the second spot. Nick Haywood runs third. Fourth is Travis Bruno. Fifth is car number 24 for Keith Pelkey. And they're side by side for the sixth spot. You'll want to keep an eye on Buck O'Branham in car number 20 as he tries to fly towards the front of the field. That 20 car had problems with the battery in the qualifier. Oh, Sean Duquette trying to save it right in front of Bramham. He goes sliding down in the infield, headed towards one of those tires. Bam! Systems 24 for Keith Pelkey rounding out the top five. Sean Duquette is back with a number 18, ready to run from the back of the pack. All right, here they come off turn number four, green flag. And I think different things to watch in this race as it progresses. Robin Wood running out front, but you want to keep an eye on Buck O'Branham and the progress that he makes with that number 20 machine. Like Cody Benoit got into the bunker coming off of turn number two. He lost a couple of spots on the outside. And you can see cars, Rick, just dancing on the inside of that racetrack. Really slick, especially over in three and four. Is that last lap, you can see Brian McGinley's car just dart around there. Three wide right behind McGinley. You got the 18 of Duquette, then the 77 on the outside, and Jimmy Bushy's 11 on the inside. But Jamie Beagle is not going away without a fight. That time, Robin Wood had the lead at the stripe, and his lead was about a foot. And actually, on the scoring monitor, the scoring monitor had Jamie Beagle in the lead. So they're still even running into turn number four. That outside line is faster right now for Jamie Beagle, and at the stripe, he's got the lead. We've got cars spinning over at turn number four. Buck O'Branham is into the infield. Jamie Atkins in car number four was down in the infield. Bigor row one, Bruno Haywood row two. Here they come. They're on it. Along the front stretch, green flag. Good re 
restart for Robin Wood. Jamie Beagle wasn't able to pin him down to the inside, and now Robin Wood is going to be able to run whatever line he wants around the track as uh, he was able to work well past, and he's got a car length advantage as they race off turn number four. Lap number five goes up on the board. Race for third, Travis Bruno, Nick Haywood, Tyler Terry, and the 24 of Keith Pelkey all in the mix as they run side by side. Spots three through six, there goes Travis Bruno. Travis Bruno goes for a spin. Everybody trying to take evasive action, the 21 of Dave Raptoy. He got bumped as cars tried to woe up coming off the fourth turn. The top 10 finds Howard Stoner sixth, Jamie Atkins seventh, Mike Shagnon eighth, ninth Cody Benoit, and Dan Sullivan in the 10th spot. Here they come off turn number four, single file, restart back under green. Jamie Bevor trying to attach himself to that back bumper of Robin Wood and try to hang with him as long as possible, keep him in his sights. He had a peek to the inside that time into three and four. See if that inside line can come in for him. But again, it's just treacherous going down on the inside. See Keith Pelkey in the 24 was down on the inside and Tyler Terry in the 44 on the outside line is gonna pull away from him and he's gonna take that four spot. Robin Wood leading by a car link. Jamie Beagle running in second and it's three car links back to Nick Haywood in the 29. And four car lengths back to the 44 of Tyler Terry. Three back to Keith Belke, who is now fifth. Running in sixth is Howard Stoner. Jamie Atkins is seventh. Eighth is the one of Cody Benoit, but he's got the 86 on the outside. And again, that outside line has been coming in for these drivers. Mike Shagnon and Cody Benoit, the best battle on the racetrack right now as they race side by side for the eighth position. Benoit hanging on to it, but you can see him squirrely coming off the fourth turn. Got Dan Sullivan right behind. Sullivan following on the inside line. Again, Benoit is loose off of turn number two with that rear end kicking out. Mike Shagan in the 86 gives a tap to the number one. Here comes the three looking on the inside. Dan Sullivan, you got three cars mixing it up for spots right around that 10th position, eight, ninth, and 10th. The spots, Sullivan, the three, Benoit, the one, the 86 of Shagan. They are running eighth, ninth, and 10th. As Gordy Stone 77 falls back, we got contact, the one, the three, the one goes around, and we got another yellow flag. Those three teams, those three drivers have been mixing it up the last couple of laps. And eventually, well, Cody, let's see if we can at least do that again. But that was still only five, Brock. I know, well. Slow pace set by Robin Wood. Now he gets on it, here they come. Green flag. Side-by-side side racing for position number five. Howard Stoner's trying to get in the top five. He's to the inside of Keith Pelkey's car. Keith Pelkey comes back after him on the outside. Tyler Terry wants to go to the top of the track. Terry looking after the 29 of Nick Haywood. Can't quite get to that spot, though. Battle for the fifth position, the 57 and the 24. Howard Stoner on the inside. He's in that fourth spot, but Keith Pelkey's coming back. Seesaw battle for position number five make it as they race off a of turn number four at the stripe. Howard Stoner's going to have fifth. Just past the halfway point down, this 25-lap feature event for the JNS Steel Sportsman Cars. Plattsburgh's Robin Wood has the lead by two car lengths. Morris driver Jamie Beagle running in that second spot. And it's Nick Haywood racing in third, but he's got Tyler Terry looking high and low, and Jamie Begor looking to the inside, and Robin Wood going into turn number one. Jamie Begor trying to get the nose underneath. Robin Wood is working a middle line around the track, perhaps that inside groove coming in a little bit for Jamie Begor. He was right there in the turns one and two, and almost got the nose underneath the 61. Robin Wood leads, Jamie Begor is second. He's not going away. Jamie Begor's had about a half car length off the back bumper of car number 61. Running third is Nick Haywood in the 29, then it's the 44 of Tyler Terry. And then a big gap back to Howard Stoner, who has cleared the 24 of Keith Pelkey in that fifth spot. But Jamie Begor putting up a good fight, hanging with Robin Wood around the racetrack. It is a half car length to a car length advantage for car number 61 as they run up into turns one and two. Nick Haywood still two, three car lengths off the back bumper of the 19, running in the third spot, and then the same distance back to the 44 of Tyler Terry, who is running in fourth. Robin Wood in car 61 continues to show the way. He took the lap, uh, took the lead rather on lap number one. He has led every lap of the race. And he has 
starting to stretch it out a little bit. One car length has become two in the middle of the back stretch. We'll set the field this time by lap number 17 going up on the board. Eight laps remain for Robin Wood. Jamie Beagle in second, Nick Haywood running third, Tyler Terry is fourth, fifth is Howard Stoner in the 57, sixth is Keith Pelkey in the 24, seventh is Jamie Atkins in the 68, Jimmy Bushy has rallied to an eighth place run right now with car number 11, running in ninth is Dan Sullivan in the three, running in 10th is Mike Shagan with the 86, 11th is car number four for Brandon Atkins, 12th is Travis Bruno in car number 33, 13th is Sean Duquette in car number 18, running in the 14th spot is Steven Brissett in the 59, 15th is Cody Benoit in car number one, and 16th is Gordy Stone in car number 77. Four cars in the garage area, 16 cars still out on the racetrack. Best racing around the racetrack right now is between the, the 68 and the 11, and then you've got some good side-by-side -side racing between the 33 and the four as Brandon Atkins tries to take a spot away from Travis Bruno. Five laps to go this time by for Robin Wood. Robin looking to lead every lap of this 25 lap feature event. Actually, there might have been one lap in there where Jamie Vigor took the lead away on the outside. I remember on the scoring monitor, Jamie was assigned the lead. So not quite every lap led for Robin Wood as I believe Jamie Vigor for one or maybe even two laps in the early stages, the very early stages of the race. Jamie had the lead on the outside. But it's a comfortable two to three car length advantage right now for Robin Wood. Make it three at the stripe. And the next time by, Chief Starter Butch Henry will show, give him the two to go sign. Here come the leaders into turn number four. Popsicle sticks are up. And we got two laps to go for the 61. 19 of Bigor can see him, but he can't get in the ballpark to make a play. Three car lengths to disadvantage. Robin Wood, the 2010 and defending track champion, is on his way to another win. White flag. Final time off of turn number two. Jamie Begor still in the rear view mirror of Robin Wood, but it's a three car length advantage through turn three into turn number four. Begor tries to make one last gasp for the lead. Not going to happen. It's Robin Wood winning. Jamie Begor second, third to Nick Haywood, fourth to Tyler Terry, fifth it's Howard Stoner, sixth to Keith Pelkey, seventh Jimmy Bushy, eighth Jamie Atkins, ninth Danny Sullivan, tenth to Travis Bruno, 11th Mike Sagan, 12th Brandon Atkins, 13th John Duquette, 14th Stephen Brissett, 15th. Gets a second place finish tonight. And we're going to throw it downstairs. Rob Knowles is standing by to have another chat with Robin Wood. All right, Robin Wood is climbing out of his car. No marks on this one. There's a lot of marks on some of the other cars in the field, but the 61 wins again. Robin picks up his second victory in two tries. A great start to the season for the defending track champion. And uh, took the lead on lap number one. The best uh, racing for you, at least, side-by-side -side competition wise was early in the race with Jamie on the outside. Yeah, definitely. Jamie's got a really fast car this year. He really stepped up his program. Uh, the track really, really hard to race on with the water up in turn three and four. Uh, kind of got to apologize for the fans having to put through that kind of race, but uh, maybe we'll get some dry weather and the track will be good next week. Jamie, uh, uh, Robin, rather, it looked like the inside line, especially in three and four, was really tough. It looked like a lot of the teams were tiptoeing, and a number of times we saw cars basically spinning on their own. Yeah, you had to hit it just right. You want to run, run the bottom up there. If you 
slipped up just like six inches or so. You got very slight layers in it, and uh, it's either got you sideways or it made your car push. And uh, I hit it a couple times. I thought I gave Jamie a couple shots, but uh, I got to thank my sponsors, Ganyanka Territorial Bengals, Renorak, Leland's Barbershop, Daniel Signs, uh, my girlfriend Nikki, my dad Rudy, Eric, uh, Gary, Barb, and of course Tyler. Coming from the back of the pack next week now. Yeah, that should be a little bit tougher next week, I think. Well, congratulations. Great start to the year. Thank you. All right, Robin Wood with his second victory of the season with the number six. Bush Bombers ready to go. 15 laps. Josh Gervas trying to become the fourth repeat winner. Here they come off turn four. Down to the green. And it's a good jump once again. He'll got the 27. Of Kevin Martineau goes for a spin in turn one. Martineau refires his car, gets it out of harm's way. And we're going to stay green. How about that? Duravaz, Sherman, and Hendry run one, two, three to complete lap number one. But Duravaz starts to open up that lead on the 21 of Travis Sherman, who in turn opens up on the 60 of Hendry. A good battle for the number four spot starting to develop. The three of Rob Sides and the 72 of Curtis LaGrave. They both converge on the 60 of Hendry. 78 of Ben Garrow headed back to the garage here. His night appears to be over. Rob Sides on the inside in the three car. Gets by the 60 of Chad Hendry. He will take third. He's going to bring Curtis LaGrave with him. LaGrave will go to the fourth spot in the 72. Hendry trying to battle right back on the outside in the 60. And we get back to Bill Joyle in the 58 and John Michael Brissett in the 14th car running in the seventh spot. Brandon Nolan runs eighth. Good battle for the ninth spot between the 45 of David Hart and the 14 of David Brissett. Up front, Josh Durbage will complete lap number five this time by he's built up a 15 car length advantage on the 21 of Travis Sherman. And he is quickly going to be running into lap traffic. Look out on turn two, up into the bunker is the 14 car. Cuts across the racetrack right in front of the leader. That was close. Set gets that car straight out, will stay green. But certainly some anxious moments there. We've got trouble on the front stretch. That's some of the metal. Orange is in. Five down, ten to go for the Bush Bombers. They come back off turn four and back to the green flag. Again, it's a good start for Duravaz. He had a three or four car length advantage as they hit turn one. Sherman settles in the second. Sign and LaGrave continue to wage their battle for the number three spot. LaGrave outside of the 72. Sign inside in the three. Sign now has third. LaGrave has settled into the number four spot as he thought about making a look to the inside as they came off the third turn, the second turn. Here comes Bill Joyle Sr. in the 58 car to look alongside Chad Hendry in the 60. They're going to run together. Look out, the seven, uh, the three and the 72 made a little contact. That bottled those cars up. Now Hendry gets into the side of the three. Nice save by Rob Sign. Holy cow, that car got hammered by the 60. But those four cars have been bottled up for about the last lap and a half. Now Hendry gets taken out by the 58. Yellow flag is out on this restart. They start to pick it up off turn four, and once again, Duravash gets a great jump. Sherman is second. Curtis LaGrave has moved into the number three spot with a 72. Trouble on that sign card. He's lost two or three spots. And it looks like he's going to lose more as Joyle is flying up on the outside. And he's followed by the 60th, Chad Hendry. Rob Sign, who restarted fourth, is now running at the back of the top ten. 
We may have a battle for the number two spot as Curtis LeGrave is starting to close that gap on the Travis Sherman 21. They both got to pick it up a bit if they're going to contend with the 88 of Dervash. Here comes LeGrave to the inside as they head up the back stretch. The battle for the number two spot. Five laps remain. Sherman on the outside and Curtis LeGrave on the inside. They remain together off turn four. At the line, it's LeGrave who now takes second. Sherman is back to third. John Michael Brissett, he's fourth, but not for long. Brissett kicks it up off turn two in the bunker, and that allows Bill Joyle Sr. to move into the number four spot. JMB back to fifth. Brandon Nolan runs six. Rob Sign is seventh. Eighth spot goes to the 17 of Jordan LeGrave. David Hart is ninth. And Chad Henry runs out your top ten. Jordan LeGrave will pick up a spot as he goes around the three of sign. Josh Duravage. Leads the field in a turn three. He'll see the popsicle sticks as there are two to go this time by. Two laps away from Josh Duravage going back to back to kick off 2011. Curtis LeGrave, about 10 car lengths behind as he is opened up on the third place Sherman Automobile. White flag coming out. Duravage has got to deal with a couple of lap cars as he comes off turn four. He'll fly by those on the outside with no problem whatsoever. White flag is out for the leader. Curtis LeGrave going to have to settle for second tonight. Battle for third. going to be between Travis Sherman in that 21 and Bill Joyle in the 58. Here comes the field off turn four. Checkered flag in the air for the 88 of Josh Duravage. Back-to-back -back wins. Curtis LeGrave will finish second. Third spot's going to be close to the line, but Sherman's going to hold on for third, with Bill Twaits getting fourth. And fifth spot going to the 14. Uh, Dervage did not win last week or two weeks ago in this car. This is a new 88. Mind everyone as they're leaving the speedway this evening, please stay to the right hand side on Broadrick Road. All right, Rick, Josh Duravage, two for two in the Bush Bomber division. Josh is out of his car, an all pro in victory lane now with a number of wins that he's racking up in this uh, bomber division. Another victory for Josh. Come on around, Josh Duravage, congratulations. What about the old car? What did you do with a car that won two weeks ago? Oh, the old car, she's here. She's still on the trailer, though. So I decided to bring the new one out and spank them. <laughs> That's exactly what you did. Uh, th this car, obviously, uh, tell us about the development of this car. Is this is something that you've been working on over the winter? This is my backup car that was last year that my uncle run. So we put a new motor in it and had a new paint job, and that's all we did. Well, it looks uh, pretty darn good running up front. Two for two already, Josh, but next week you'll be starting further in the back. Yeah, well, it should be all right, though. Well, congratulations. You're uh, off to a flying start, and you're, you're really taking it to everybody. Thank you. I got to thank all my sponsors, Car Cesaro Sales, Body Art Tattoo, Ed's Power Coating, CVR Engine Rebuilders, and Morse Flatwork. All right, that's Josh Duravage, everybody, who wins again. Two for two. In the